Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant, welcome back to the channel. It is Sunday, and we've learned from what happened last week. The Icon Pack is going away today, and what will replace it? Well, the writing is already on the wall, or should I say, the pack is in the code. And it's been in the code since late last week, which is exactly what happened with the Icon a week ago that we were surprised by. So we gotta talk about the first uncapped no max rating hero pack sbc potentially coming today we got to prepare for it look at buying fodder and how it might impact hero prices and the rest of the market today on a sunday also we got to look at the biggest sbc league that we may have had this year so far for a player of the month i don't know if it's coming today maybe tomorrow but in the next couple of days Maybe that high-rated fodder is finally going to move. We're going to talk a lot about fodder today, guys. So if you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Now, before we talk about all that, we got to go to yesterday's content on Saturday, which actually had a couple of decent things about it. Firstly, we got to take a look at this brand new Evo, which is called Incisive Deep Lying Playmaker, which, as you could maybe guess, it gives incisive pass playstyle and also Deep Lying Playmaker Plus, not Plus Plus, but it gives at least a plus version of that, as well as first touch and a sizable upgrade, but once again, limited by the stat limits. I think this is a good Evo. It creates, again, good cards. If you take a look at some of the players you can put in this, this Kalk Array, you know, he's almost Hullet Gang besides the shooting. It's not bad. The thing that I'm noticing about this Evo straight away is, yes, it's a decent upgrade. It's pretty easy to do, but the overall is the issue. I think Evoing a 78 like this Sal card up to an 85 when most of his stats are 81, 82, 83. With the overall rating being 85, he's probably not going to be able to be evolved again for a while. So the, the cheese here, honestly, might be looking for silvers or bronzes that you can Evo with this because they get the full upgrade, probably not limited by any of the stat limits on the cards. And also notice this. They will not go to 85 rated because they're silver cards, right? Like this, uh, let's look at this Bittencourt silver card here for a second because he has pretty good stats and he's a silver. Hold on, right here. Yeah, some 60s and some 70s, but he's got 80 dribbling. So like this card goes to an 81 rated. Maybe it's not the best example, but you see, right? 81 rated with those kind of stats. It'd be very, very easy for him to fit another Evo after this in the next week or two or something like that. that that's what I would be looking for with this. Even with the Jude Evo that came out, I really think that an Evo like this one is, is best used on... Look at this. A silver card goes to a 79 rated, but he's got 80 dribbling, 83 pace, and then 79 passing and shoot, uh, shooting. That's not bad. You're adding more play styles to this Evo, to a silver card, or to a bronze, and then you're giving yourself opportunities to evolve in the future. Some people are able to be double evolved, like this Casado card from um, Barca. A lot of people are doing this. This card's like 5K. So you do have some uh, bronzes and silvers and even some gold non-rares like Menu that are pretty popular in this one, and they're up on the market. So, of course, if you want to take the cash on those, look out for that. But this one for me is just a, kind of like a passion Evo. Find somebody from your favorite club, you know, Add a player to that, Evo somebody up through a chain using that one. There's nothing right now that makes you want to do that Evo. Maybe wait for a chain for it as well. So that's my thoughts on that Evo. It's a nice one. It's nice that it's free. It's not that many games, but that's about it. Now, yesterday, guys, we had more USA content and SBCs. I tweeted out yesterday after this was dropped. I was like, yo, it seems like EA um, is based in the USA, not Canada. We've had so many American cards start off the year, which for an American is really cool. And this SBC, I think, is solid as well, but I think most people won't be super interested in it unless you're trying to link USA cards together. The links are going to be the toughest part. Although, if you take a look at this season, there are some Leon cards and some D1 Arkema cards there where you could link this Lindsay Horan. She's got a lot of really good play styles, though. A lot of really good play styles. She has Playmaker++ plus plus as a center mid. Also, Shadow Striker++ uh, plus and Playmaker++ plus as a cam. She's 4-star, four 4-star. Four and the stats, guys, you look into the fine details. 93 long pass, 92 short pass with 90 reactions, ball control, 95 jumping, 92 heading, 88 stamina. This is a really, really good card. And it's just going to be tough to link, which is why probably not that many people are going to do it. EA, once again, went with the quantity over the higher ratedness of the SBCs. We've got multiple 82 squads, multiple 83, and then a couple 84. So it's seven squads, and it looks kind of annoying in that regard. Only 161,000 coins. Now, I'm going to say this just because I think it's actually a decent comparison. But there's a big SBC coming pretty soon, right? For a player of the month, Puteus, which we're going to talk about at the end of the video. I'm going to dub Lindsay Horan as the budget 
Puteus. Because if you compare their cards, she's not 5 star, 5 star. But they kind of have similar stats and probably going to play similarly in the game. So maybe this is one that you pass on right now because of a Puteus coming. But for me, I'm probably going to try to get this done with a low rated fodder soon. Just because that is a really, really nice card. And it's going to be... You know, hard to link. That's why most people will do it. Anyways, let's go to the other SBC. We, I guess we weren't done with squad foundations. The Turkish League. Yes, we didn't have that yet. This is a pretty cheap Yilmaz here. Really interesting positions that he can play. Right mid, left mid, right wing, and then left back. And he also has um, inside forward plus plus. Interesting card, but pretty cheap for sure. The pace is nice. The most interesting thing about the Turkish League foundations is the objective with the Gedzin Fernandez, which is a really solid looking card. But this right here, Jiku, the center back. If you still have the Fenerbahce left mid Allen St. Maximin SBC, this would be a pretty nice link for you. And he's actually really good. He's got anticipate, slide tackle, intercept, block, aerial as well. That's a really good card. And you look at some of the individual stats that he has here. He's got 85, you know, 91 jumping and kind of the mid 80s defending before a shadow or for an anchor. His short pass, a long pass is not bad either. And he's got stopper plus plus defender, a ball playing defender plus. So that's actually not a bad card. He doesn't have a playstyle plus, so he could be evolved probably pretty soon too. So if you're running any ASM links there, Fenerbahce links right there for that Jiku card. Maybe worth completing in squad battles this week as you're getting those things done. So not a crazy day in terms of content for sure. One thing I do want to mention though and actually claim is the FC Pro stuff. Because if you're able to watch the stream yesterday, uh, if you watch for an hour, you got the 250 SP and you also got the Prime Gold Players Pack on Tradable. You can do this again today for day two. And of course, Watching again, again today for an hour will get you another Prime Gold Players Pack, another 250 season points, and of course, the group reward, which is a 100k pack, and that one will be very nice to open. We'll open this one right here. I don't expect too much out of it, but you know what? Might as well send it. Ooh, there is one player guaranteed to be 82 or higher. We do not get a walkout, so we'll just skip that. Moroccan striker and Nezri, maybe? Yes. Bailey Vasquez, Terrier for the Evo. Lindelof, all right, nothing super crazy there, but you know what? It's some easy free fodder for just turning on the games and uh, and be watching that. One thing I do want to note about um, the pro scene is keep an eye on the market as you're watching that stream today, maybe, or just kind of have it on in the background. Keep an eye on cards. This Didier Drogba was um, highlighted a lot at the beginning of the stream yesterday, and he actually at one point spiked up to 2 million coins. I don't know if he ever sold there, but players that the pros are using and the formations and the tactics definitely gets a lot of hype on those streams like that. So something to kind of keep note of, there will be prices that move as players get talked about. Now, speaking of prices that moved, yesterday we had a couple pretty crazy price spikes with the Trailblazers team number two, especially this Marmouche. And I know that now most people are getting him via the four-day loan in the objectives. But look at this. He went from 230K, spiked all the way at 305. Now he's back down to 214,000 coins. Um, that was kind of the craziest movement on the market yesterday. It was a really quiet day. Usman Dembele and some of these other cards had good fluctuations, like down and then bounce backs up. If you time this right, Usman's down bad again, 1.17. We do have squad battle rewards supply today, so I'd be very careful buying these players, especially on the middle to low tier. I don't even want to know how cheap Grimaldo is going to get. 35k for this is wild. That's an insane car for 35k. Anyway, then on the other side of things, you have this Trinity Rodman, who's still a million coins, which seems very expensive. Same thing with Luis Diaz being 730,000 coins for him as well. I think even Bremer had a crazy spike yesterday. He's 600,000 coins right now. Yeah, he had a crazy spike up to like 700,000, which is nuts. So I would expect these to drop though today, especially with the hero pack that is upcoming. I think people may be selling a few things to get some coins ready to get involved in that hero pack. So that's one thing I wanted to mention, but the market was pretty quiet other than that. I had a couple of trades and a couple of flips, but not a, hot, not a lot else going on. I did take the coins on some cards that I just were feeling like weren't moving that well. I picked up Gabriel for 320, sold him for 359, um, flipped another Barcola. He's a good one to trade. Flipped a couple of Georges from 220 to 240, small profits, but it's there. And then I also sold the hemp. Uh, that I had purchased at 36k, sold her for 46,000 coins. I also flipped the Ramirez. Uh, this was bought at 960, so it wasn't a lot of profit, but it was a little bit. The stuff that I'm struggling with right now are the Lizarazus, actually, because with the hero pack coming today and his price not really doing well at the moment, it's looking like I might just have to take a bit of a loss on him. There wasn't as much demand for Musiala, and the French links, I mean, they're still good um, and they're still very hyped, but it doesn't seem to be 
as hyped as maybe we originally thought or hoped that it would be. I'm also looking at some trends right now for a quick flip because he's kind of low. His card is one that just bounces so good all the time. Same thing with his Barcola. I love picking him up at like 400K and then selling him at like 440. I mean, he's kind of going up right now, but that's just something that I keep an eye on all the time. So we'll see if we get some like, quick flips on out of packs cards today. That'd be the place. If you're going to trade to be looking, Heroes and Icons would fall into that as well. Now let's talk about Sunday content and this base hero pack, guys, because this is the pack code that we're talking about. And remember, last week, we saw the Max 88 icon was added to the code like on Thursday, and then it was dropped on Sunday, and we were kind of like, oh, dip. That's crazy. EA switching from the Wednesday hero and icon packs to the Sunday, I guess. And it looks like we're going to start continuing on that trend because the icon goes away today, and this one's here in the code. So it would be one base hero player item. There was some jokes um, earlier in the week when this was released, like, Nate, is he going to do the 25k hero pack in the store and crash the market again on purpose? No, this is not that. Hopefully, if they do that again, that'd be ridiculous. But we expect this to be released as an SBC pack today, again, as we learned from last week. Now, what is even added? See, this is the first uncapped one, so there's no Max 88, no Max 87. So what cards are even added in? Well, Ginola is the biggest one, Lucio is the second biggest, and then also a Betty Pele and Rudy Voller, and a couple other fodder cards like Sausage, the new women's hero that's been added to the game as well. So it's not adding in a whole lot of heroes. It's just kind of opening up some of those top tier cards and some of the middle tier and even some fodder ones as well. But the fact that Ginola is packable in it of course we'll all be dreaming of packing him today also with more cards in it and all the heroes in it now how much is this going to look like price wise well the max 88 which we just saw was 200,000 coins to complete it was an 84 85 and an 86 but if we remember all they added from the max 87 to the max 88 was just the 84 squad i believe or yeah i think it's just the 84 squad so how much are they going to increase the price for having all of the heroes packable from an SBC like this? That was something that I was trying to ponder and think about with like, they made the Max 88 cheaper than we kind of thought it was. So is this one going to end up being a little bit more expensive? And are we going to be bummed at how expensive it is? My guess for this one today is maybe, maybe they make it an 85, 85, 86. Maybe it's two 85s, two, an 84 and an 86. I don't know. I don't think it'll be more than 300,000 coins because this one was 200,000 with these three squads right here. So I'm hoping that it's not too much more than that. But of course, when we talk about the price of this SBC and a hero pack, we look at fodder, right? Is it time to invest? I think it is, especially if you want to get in on fodder this week. I think you got to buy with squad battle rewards. That's going to be the time where everybody's looking to buy today. You've even seen some of these 85s are starting to go up. They're right around 6K. They were down at content yesterday at about 5.5, 5.6 even a little bit below that on bid for the 85 specifically. I think you're looking for a dip like that today with squad battle rewards to get in on these cards. But I would imagine after rewards hits, these are going to start climbing into content as everybody's going to be talking about the hero packs coming today. Get invested by fodder because fodder did so good last week as an investment. Everybody remembers that. Well, the difference this week is we don't have a hero pack and an icon pack out at the same time. So yes, fodder still could do good. It still could, honestly. But at the same time, you know, it's really you're investing for the hero pack today and then whatever SBCs would come out throughout the rest of the week, which there still should be some. So I think fodder is probably the best investment right now. But do I expect the 85s to go all the way to like, what were they were? What were they last week? 8 point, yeah, 8.5K at their peak on Tuesday. I don't know if I expect them to go this high. Could I see them going to maybe 7k six highs i think that's more realistic 86 is maybe up a thousand 87 is up a thousand maybe two thousand and then the 88s like they're up already there's still 19,000 coins with the icon pack going away i could actually see 88s maybe going down a little today uh but that might happen after the icon pack but then again you have puteas who's leaked and that's even an opportunity today to get in on some of that top tier maybe 88s nines 90s and 91s if ea will not release low rated squads for her and make it high rated one. So I think today is your day for fodder. I think you got to get in during the squad battle rewards uh, supply of it though. Again, the only issue for me right now with 84s and up in terms of the fodder rating that we would be looking to invest in is that there's just going to be a lot of people looking to buy today for sure. Like 100%. 5.5K, you can't turn that down. Like that's a great price for an 85. I guess I'm investing in 185 Kavicha right now, but like that's kind of what you're looking for on bids and on snipes. But after rivals today, sorry, squad battles, everybody is going to be on that and you're going to have a lot of competition for fodder. But SBCs, 
kind of have been a bit better with the icon packs and the hero packs getting better so i do expect that part of the market to rise so that's kind of what i'm looking at there now let's talk about how is it going to impact with the hero prices right i mentioned my lisa razus that i have we'll just use him as an example right now i would imagine as per usual that there's going to be a little bit of panic selling on heroes today maybe not a crazy amount as you can see right now he's about still 290 where we bought him at 298 300 is right where i got him so Maybe taking a bit of a tax loss here on three of them. That'd be like 45K, which we made back from yesterday's trades. Uh, even just trading a little bit on the market for sure. So we've overcome that. But I would imagine we see some dips on these cards. But of course, if it's a higher rated card, like if people are selling a Betty Pele or Voller today because they're like, oh my gosh, he's in the icon pack, man. He's going to get packed. He's not. You should buy him if he gets really, really low. Same thing with Matuidi, Cordoba, the usual, right? If there's any of these middle to top tier heroes that get sold off a lot, buy them. They'll probably rebound post hero pack as people are like, oh, I didn't pack the one that I wanted. Maybe they see other people packing those cards and they get some game time on streams or something like that. And then they just get more hyped and, and they kind of rebound back up to where they were before. Uh, so watch for, you know, sizable dips, but also sizable dips on cards that are rare that people might actually want to go and use. Now the lower tier of cards here, you know, maybe like 88, Beasley 85, stuff that's like 50K like Carragher. This stuff probably drops today doesn't rebound up very much unless it's somebody who's very in demand at the moment maybe like julie or maybe yeah, like tim howard tim howard always has a good demand 115 i don't know this guy always gets undercut and he's good to trade with one of the best lower budget heroes to trade with in this game i'll be completely honest tim howard good goalkeeper as well and i wouldn't say that he's really inflated right now because of the links to the new Lindsay haran is this 115 still sitting there ah uh, it's not he's good to trade with man but that's the type of card that if it bounces if it goes down today maybe you could pick him up but some of the rest of these like 70 80k and less heroes probably would be, would not be as much of a bounce on those the rest of the market as well you look at out of pack specials like maybe some of the the rush cards that we were just looking at with like the trent and stuff like that maybe if these drop today with the panic uh, of this sbc people are selling cards to be able to afford doing the hero pack you could absolutely look for some deals on these cards just be watching on footbin it's one of those things of if the cards drop a whole lot right around the content time then maybe that's going to be the best time to buy but if you're looking at the drops and it's like oh this messy went down from 1.33 to like 1.3 flat. Now nah, that's not a big enough of a drop. So it's sometime between what you would expect to call right after the content drop. And then maybe in the early hours of Monday morning when foot champs rewards are given out, that should be a low ish period for some cards on the market. Um, especially with the out of pack specials. We'll talk about golds in a second with squad better rewards, but I think that could be a good time to get on some of those and maybe get into some flips. Did I win that Trent bid that I was just trying to win? I don't think I did. What'd I go for? 338. Yeah, see, I'm not willing to pay that. I'll pay 320 something, not 330 though. So that's kind of what I'm looking at for these sorts of cards and maybe cards that I'll even be looking at today on the market if there were to be some trades. Other stuff to be watching out for today. Um, more fodder investment opportunity for the 84s because... Yo, these timers, I'm going to mention this first. The timers on this game, this is the party bag, right? The RTTK Total Rush Upgrade. It says one day, 11 hours for me right now on console. If I go on the web app, it's refreshing today because the timers on the web app actually work correctly. These are not. Pretty unfortunate there. I mean, yeah, is our 84 is going to go up for this? Maybe a little bit. 84 is in conjunction with this and... The uh, hero pack, that's where you could see some movement there. Also, a team of the week requirement. This is a really fun pack to do every single time. I'm glad it's refreshing again today for the third time because it is really cheap and really fun. And I actually got Julian Brand from the last one, so that was kind of worth it. So that's refreshing again today, so watch out for that one. Also, it's weekend, right? Weekend means SBC content for players and also Evos. I would not be surprised if we had a new Evo today. Maybe a new paid Evo because the Guti Evo is going to... Uh, expire in, in terms of unlocking the player inside of it and right now we have bag of tricks and billion brilliant bomb pastor as the two evos that are paid maybe we have another paid one coming in today which could mean it's a good upgrade so watch out for a new evo and then player sbc like i mentioned we still have the ballon d'or card design it's in the code i'm gonna mention that until we get it i want to see that card man i really want to see that card um i think there were some rumors about that yesterday on twitter which became very false so yeah watch out for credible leaks for any sort of uh, stuff like that. We don't get a lot of Evo leaks anymore, which is 
fine by me, actually. I kind of like that. But uh, watch out for any SBC leaks as well. If there's a player leak today, it'll probably be released today. Now, speaking of SBC players, we got to talk about this one. We've already name dropped it. The Alexia Puteas Player of the Month. I don't know how Donk already has the official stats of the card, but this could be literally the best SBC we've had so far this year. It's going to depend on the price, but the price is not going to be cheap. That's an expectation to set right now. Tiki Taka Playstyle Plus is a change from her gold card, which has first touch plus. It's only a plus one upgrade. Literally, if you look at the stats for the gold to this, it's a plus one across the board, but they changed the playstyle plus. Of course, the dynamic image. This is a big one. Like, I know we think about Mbappe Player of the Month or Vinny Jr. Player of the Month is like a Player of the Month that's worth doing that could be in your team for a really long time. This is a card that could be in your team for a really long time. We're talking like team of the year. This could be in your team until then, and that's in January, right? So I think this SBC is very much worth considering if you've been investing in high-rated fodder or holding off on your fodder and doing an SBC because you're like, nah, Nate, there's nothing to hits right now. This might be the one. So for me with the Playstyle Plus change, I don't even have any Barca links or Liga F links in my team. I'm going to be seriously considering this SBC depending on the price. I think the most likely date of this SBC releasing would be Monday, but that's only because the Ajibari SBC was released on a Monday about a month ago. So that's kind of our expected release date. Could this be today? It could. Sometimes they overlap by a day or two, but we'll be looking to today or Monday to see a Puteas player of the month. I don't know, guys. You let me know down in the comments, but this... This is a midfielder that everybody chases each year. I didn't really use Puteas last year, and that's kind of tempting me to maybe commit to this SBC this year. I mean, the play style is five-star, five-star on the midfield. You can't get any better than that. Pinged pass, incisive, tiki-taka, finesse, flare, first touch, technical, insane card. Absolutely incredible card. You look at the individual stats, the dribbling looks nuts. Um, passing, shooting, just an all-around great card. And you've got Roll++ plus plus as a playmaker CM, which is, I think, where a lot of people would use her. And then you've got Shadow Striker on her card as well. So, I mean, wow. that This could be big, guys. This could really be big. So, we'll be looking into that one maybe a little more tomorrow if it's not out. Maybe in terms of a price and how it's going to impact the market. But I would say, since today is the day to watch out for market movements with fodder, Today's probably that day to get on the 89s and above if you'd like to get involved in some more of that. Now, let's talk about market a little bit with squad battle rewards. I know that's probably going to be happening by the time some of you are watching this video. Also, today is U.S. time change or America time change. Clock's falling back. So I know that doesn't impact most of the rest of the world, but it will impact us that have been in the States. And content's been an hour later this past week because of the time change uh, across the pond. That's also going to be affecting us today. So... We will have time change or content time back to normal. I'm looking at this Kunde card who I sold on Thursday. How much was he on Thursday? Yeah, at 86K. No, no, right here. He went down 75K back up to 83, 80, and then 88 on Friday morning. Bro is 53K. Golds are in the mud. But if you want to look at gold cards today, they're probably going to drop. Oh my gosh, Sonny too, man. Sonny was 190 yesterday. He's 167 right now. Definitely watch gold cards because with how much they're down even from yesterday, maybe they dip with squad battle rewards and have a little bit of a rise from there. But this would be prime time for a drop heading into the weekend like we do see every week. Last week, Sonny on Saturday dropped a lot, just like we saw right now. And he went up a little bit on Sunday, then rivals rewards, boom, straight back down. We had the icon pack that created a lot of market sell-off. He got very low in the early Monday morning hours. He went down to 170. And then what does he go to by the next midweek? He's back up to 195. So that's a nice 20K rise there from 170 to 195, 25,000 coin rise. And there are probably some other cards that moved even better. So I would watch out for golds today in the panic selling as well. I would imagine they're going to go even lower with the squad battle rewards. Like, look, look at this. Wow. Last week with the uh, icon pack, Kun, they went from, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, that's last week, 87K down to 67. And then he didn't really rise that much. So maybe you look at more of the higher tier golds. That's why we've been talking about the out-of-pack specials as well. We're just getting to that stage where the specials are way better than the golds. The icons, heroes, they have way more demand. There's way more people interested in those. So that's kind of what I would look to if you're going to trade today. Kind of, I'm looking at this trend right here. If I get him for 320, I'm stoked because he goes to like 360 every single day. If I can buy this Barcola at like 400 flat, I'm stoked because he goes to like four. 
40 at least 430 every single day so definitely keep it on the out of pack specials and some of those movements that you can pick up on today maybe make some trades again i don't think you have to buy right after content sometime after content and then into the evening especially on the gold cards a couple hours later maybe even early monday morning could be a time where you pick up on some of these and then you're good to hold them for the next couple of days even with a puteus incoming and maybe that's where you kind of focus your investments maybe a card like kunde maybe i don't know about a graham hansen i know that would be a great link but that's a pretty expensive card and she's down a lot too so maybe some of your out of packs links that are um barcelona related would have a better chance of rising with a puteus uh, than a gold card would but that's just kind of stuff to think about and we'll talk more about Pateas tomorrow if she does not release today but today's about the hero pack honestly guys I'm gonna swerve the hero pack because of the Puteas. I mean if it helps me get Puteas done a couple days earlier and goes boom straight into the team because I don't do the hero pack I think that's a very very smart move especially now after having multiple of these gamble packs that are being released you can kind of tell just how over time these packs are fun but they can drain your coins and they can drain your fodder so much and then when good player spcs come out then you're left stuck without the facilities to complete those so that would be my advice to you today is hold off on the hero pack until maybe we get to puteus and that way you can even if it's there's some lower squads for puteus you'll have the fodder ready to go for that there so that's a really big SBC. we'll talk about it more and we'll be watching the market very very closely today on a sunday for the hero pack movements good opportunity to make some coins and invest at the same time and if you are going to do the hero just because you want to good luck all right i hope you guys pack some bangers i've not had good luck this year besides Perez. he was the only good pull that we've had and that's decent pull it's not that crazy but like julie cahill it's been bad for the heroes for me so i'm definitely going to be swerving this one for greener pastures ahead with guaranteed player SBCs. All right, I'll stop yapping, guys. Have a great Sunday. Enjoy the footy today. Good luck with your foot champs games. And I will see you guys hopefully in a stream today. A bit busy, but I'll hopefully see you guys in a stream. That link's down below in the description. I will catch you guys there. If you enjoyed this one, drop a thumbs up, of course, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nathan McCown. Have a great Sunday. Peace out.